Hey, it's Richard with Matthews Wealth Management, continuing October 2022. We're going to track uh, Federal Reserve numbers. Um, again, we don't have the whiteboard. We've got a PowerPoint, which I hate. It took forever to put together these slides. However, it's kind of cool. I've never shown the graphs, I guess, involved here for what we get off of the Federal Reserve website, uh, Fred. So let's just dive right in. Here we've got M2, M2SL, if you will, and we're looking kind of all the way back to 1960 and how our money supply has grown. And then we get to, this is the Great Recession after our no house left behind. And then the COVID explosion of money supply. So uh, that should give a little bit more of a visual as to what we've done here and where this inflation may be coming from, um, if anybody cares about monetarist policy. but. Moving on, let's kind of focus in. I'm gonna focus in on the numbers that I track as far as these monthlies. We go all the way back to January of 2020, the pre-COVID timeframe before this explosion. So we will zoom in. And so here's that January. And the increase and in how things have topped, right? They topped back in, it says April, I think it was more like June. Actually in June, we're looking back at April numbers. However, if you were to zoom in and look at these, I put those into the table form. That's a whole lot easier to understand. Um, but graphically, you can start to see this little bit of a taper. That is where um, money supply is contracting. We are destroying dollars, which is a good thing. We want to destroy all of these dollars if we want to get rid of inflation, y'all. That's really the bottom line to it. So let's see. Currently, $21,503,400,000,000 in circulation. And this is just how they truncate at the at the four. So I throw in the zero so you remember what, what commas look like. Um, one month ago, we were at 21 trillion, 632 billion, blah, blah, blah. So we have actually decreased our money supply by six tenths of a percent. Cool, that's a good start actually. If you recall, we have not done well at all of lowering M2. Uh, we've done a little bit of balance sheet, which you'll see uh, in the next slide, but uh, M2 destruction is awesome. This is the first time and in the very last slide, you'll see my, my biggest compliment, I guess, out there. So year to date, we've destroyed, you know, 800th of a percent more than what we did in the last month. Um, so congrats, I guess. But this was the first substantial month of uh, money destruction. So a year ago, we're still up. 2.56%. So if you're just very basic with how you look at, it, at inflation, this is, you know, as you create more dollars to circulate, the price of everything must go up given the same amount of production, the same amount of people, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, we're still plus on the one year. January, the pre-COVID was 15.4 trillion before we saw that big spike up in uh, printed money. So uh, we're still 39.62% more dollars circulating than what we had before uh, we just shut down an entire country or world actually the whole globe so now let's jump over to balance sheet wow that's a cool looking graph isn't it if we look at how much money was parked at the fed this is going back to like 2000 right um less than a trillion and then we had the great recession this was the bailouts this was um tarp troubled asset relief uh, purchase. So this was buying up all the junk mortgages out there. And um, I thought we were going to sell them back out or they would, you know, we'd see exactly what the default rate was and reprice them mark to market and get them back out there to the investment banks. But no, uh, the, it was still too, too much of a troubled industry, the whole mortgage world. So we continued all of this along the way. And we were actually starting to sell off that uh, the bad mortgages and the, the excess debt that it took to, to keep things rolling with no interest uh, all along. Remember, we had zero interest since then. We had low interest rates from, uh, from Greenspan panicking after 9-11. And now we have all this extra money creation that was parked on the Fed balance sheet that we were starting to sell back out into the, uh, the world until we had to shut down and, and spend our way with, uh, with fake money. And this, again, is uh, how much treasury debt and, and some high yield, and, um, but debt basically is what somehow they're allowed to buy now. They're the buyer of last resort, not the lender. Uh, the, the, the treasury is the one that's borrowing, 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 and then the Fed just prints the money and buys that junk debt at low interest rates. And 
So we had this huge spike and it's continued, right? PPP, unemployment, all that fun stuff, stimulus. And then you can see there's a peak. We're starting to sell off that, that uh, from the balance sheet, which is a good thing. And that's something that they said that they would start accelerating. And I think we're starting to see it. So let's zoom back in to the 2020. And this is what that graph looks like closer. This was all of the, uh, the purchases from the, uh, the treasury and then all the incremental additional purchases. And again, we've got a peak here and we're starting to see the good taper. So let's look at the numbers on the, uh, the chart here. Currently, there's $8.723 trillion still at the Federal Reserve. And so if, if they were, uh, think of this as, as excess money that needs to be destroyed, right? This has to be somehow sold back out. All of this debt needs to be sold back out into the market or mature. And, um, you know, they're supposed to be gathering 1% interest or so on this. But, but as we've raised rates, we've actually hurt the uh, marketable. If we mark to market this thing, oh my goodness, that, that's something that the Fed would be terrified of. And, um, you know, we don't apply the same gap accounting apparently. But one month ago, um, we were 8.795 trillion. So they sold off just under 1%. Um, so I guess 96 more months of this in a row without breaking a financial system with illiquidity, but we'll see what happens. Year to date, well, that's weird. <laughs> we haven't even really, so we had actually continued to create some. Um, but yeah, we're, we're finally accelerating that. And they said that they would do that. It's good to see them following through a year ago, 195. Remember the other one was 265. Cool, right? Like this is going good. We're still up 109% since all of our mortgage garbage from 2008 um, for our new COVID garbage, but um, they're, they're moving in the right direction and quantitative tightening, which is what this is, is, is yet to really be thought through, I think, in the market in terms of what it's going to do to yields. Uh, one of the things that the Fed could have done would be to have sold this before raising rates and they would have been able to, to destroy more dollars, dollar for dollar. Uh, instead, the old bonds are worth you know, 70 cents on the dollar uh, because of the other bonds available at the higher interest rates. Um, since we, we lowered rates and then did quantitative easing, it would have made sense to do quantitative tightening before raising rates. But I don't know, maybe that's just logical or something. We'll see how this turns out for them. But uh, this is the good news. I'm going to give a compliment, which I rarely, rarely do. Um, we cut the balance sheet. I just did the numbers of dollars. We cut the balance sheet at the Fed by 72.4 billion. Cool. That's the goal, right? I think they said 50 billion is what they were doing. And then they were going to jump to 75 and we're kind of there. Um, M2 was, was cut by 129 billion. So more than the balance sheet, uh, which means the fiscal cut, Congress spent $56 billion less. And I think this is going to be a very important piece of how do we rein in inflation? Inflation is really driven by government spending and how they finance it is where we start to get this financialized garbage with low interest rates and, and buying up debt and buyer of last resort and all of this stuff. But if we can continue fiscal cuts, there's a chance to lower inflation. Um, and we're starting to see it. It's had a bigger impact on M2. Um, you know, almost as much as cutting the balance sheet amount. So uh, it'll be interesting to see if this continues. Uh, Post-election, I don't think there was anything major that, that came out of it as far as spending cuts, but uh, we'll see if we can keep spending a little bit less. So good job, Congress. Let's see if you can keep it up. So we'll be back to talk about November when that happens, but uh, that is the month of October 2022.